electric vehicles are kind of touted as the vehicles of the future at the moment. We have basically a, a big push from government, from pretty much everyone to move away from fossil fuel powered cars and, and pretty much all vehicles. Um, and to that end, electric vehicles seem to be the method that people have picked as the best one to go forward with and, and try and get behind. But the market in the UK at the moment is, it's a little bit tricky to gauge. So overall, electric vehicles, as you might expect from this big push, from uh, the very ordered transition towards them, they are becoming more popular. However, sales have kind of plateaued a little bit. This year in particular, if you look at the the graph of the sales in the UK and, and Europe, then kind of go, goes up, goes up, goes up. And then this year it just goes into a little straight line. So it seems like some of the initial problems that people have reported with EVs um, and some of the concerns around them might be starting to catch up a little bit. There aren't many barriers to actually buying an EV. It's not difficult to go out and find one, um, other than the fact that they cost a little more initially than most cars. Um, you know, I think Tesla's, their kind of base model Tesla costs about 42, 43,000 pounds, whereas maybe an equivalent car you could probably get for just under that, maybe 38,000 pounds, something like that, with a, a petrol or diesel engine. Diesel particularly, because it's quite cheap now. The main costs and the main issues with electric cars, which you should watch out for, really come afterwards. Running costs has been one. Insurance has gone through the roof for EV owners recently. We've done quite a few stories on people who have bought EVs and they've been quoted kind of ludicrous amounts for their car insurance renewal. Um, things like maintenance, there's there's relatively few skilled mechanics who, who are trained in repairing EVs in the UK. And so it can be hard to find people outside of you know, dealerships and so on. If you live nowhere near an EV dealership, it might be kind of hard to find someone to fix your car. And when they do fix it, the parts, especially if you've got a battery issue, can be very, very expensive. Charging has been a bit of an issue with the UK. The the infrastructure, one of the, the main complaints we hear over and over again from people who have EVs or people looking to get one is that they, they would get them or they love their EV, but the charging infrastructure just isn't there. Uh, there's currently only about 49,000 chargers in the UK. The government have invested last year, they invested a billion pounds in expanding the charging network. They estimate that that number will increase 10 times by 2030. But right now, if you're buying an EV, it might be hard to find someone to charge it. We did a report a few weeks ago that the majority of local council areas in the UK actually have no publicly available roadside charging whatsoever. So you have to you know, either go to a specialist charging station or there just isn't in your area. There's some counties which are entire black spots. And so it can be quite hard to find charging. It can be quite expensive if you want fast charging. And if you don't plump for the, the more expensive charging, it can take quite long. The, the ROC say that the average fuel fill up in the UK takes about six minutes. It can take anywhere between 15 minutes and an hour, an hour and a half to fully charge your EV. We've even seen people have, you know, ridiculously long waits of busy charging stations and long queues and stuff up to several hours just to get to, you know, 80% charge. So that can be a, an issue that people face. When these incentives came in, you do see little spikes in EV sales. So for example, the government introduced something called the uh, the plug-in vehicle grant, that was for hybrids and fully electric cars, which you plug in to charge. Um, and they put money towards the cost of buying it. And I think a little bit towards the cost of running it. Um, but that actually ended last year. And since then, we've seen a little stagnation in in the buying of EVs. Things like running costs, which weren't necessarily an, an enforced incentive. It wasn't like a given incentive. But insurance used to be a lot cheaper. Maintenance costs, um, you don't need maintenance as much. You don't need things like oil changes and all that sort of stuff. So that was cheaper. But now it, seem, it seems that EVs have become a little more expensive to run. And now there's a big debate over, are they cheaper than petrol anymore?
especially once electricity costs went up with the whole cost of living crisis and, and the inflation that came with that, we saw electricity costs really go through the roof. And so charging your EV actually can be quite expensive at times and even equivalent to filling it up with petrol. I'm announcing today that we're going to ease the transition to electric vehicles. You'll still be able to buy petrol and diesel cars and vans until 2035. Even after that, you'll still be able to buy and sell them secondhand. That was announced with a great deal of, of fanfare and it was a you know, very big announcement. But ultimately, just in, in terms of the reality of things, it, it doesn't mean much because what he didn't do was repeal the, the government's EV mandate. So even though the, the ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel cars has been pushed back five years, 2030 to 35, by 2030, the government still mandates that 80% of new cars sold must be electric anyway. It, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. And, and there was also a lot of misunderstanding around what the ban actually entailed. It never meant that you wouldn't be able to buy petrol or diesel anymore. It never meant that you wouldn't be able to buy petrol and diesel cars secondhand. All it meant was that manufacturers couldn't make and sell new models of petrol and diesel cars. You could definitely get them on the second-hand market and petrol and diesel, by all estimates, will be around for a lot longer, well into the 2040s, 50s, or maybe even beyond. If you live in a very densely populated, very built-up area of a city like London or Manchester or Birmingham, maybe a Tesla wouldn't be for you. It's not great necessarily for, you know, small roads, running around, quick jobs, that would be something like if you want a, an, an electric car, a Fiat 500e. Fiat 500 is a very, very popular car for precisely that purpose. Uh, Nissan made the Nissan Leaf all the way back in 2011. It was one of the first all-electric cars. That's great for running around towns and cities. If you're interested in buying an electric car, first of all, make sure that you have the infrastructure around you, that you can afford it, that you're comfortable with the cost that goes into it. But other than that, they're, they're very good. They're renowned for being quite reliable. They're renowned for being able to do pretty much everything a petrol car does other than maybe just the range issue. But they, they are a good option and they obviously don't come with the environmental cost attached.